Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Do you want to become insanely successful? Do you want to be the go-to guru in your industry? Do you want to be talked about for all the right reasons? For over 40 years, Kevin Harrington has helped people just like you become significant influencers. Now he's broken the process down in the key person of influence roadmap, and it's yours for free. Just text KPI to him at 727-888-2100. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free step-by-step guide. Text KPI to 727-888-2100 to get the recognition you deserve and experience the success as the go-to voice everyone listens to in your industry today. Brian, welcome to the podcast. Uh, Today we're talking with Brian Kurtz, the founder and CEO of Titans Marketing. And the word Titan is really appropriate in your case, given uh, what you have done over the years. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm glad I'm here, too. Let's start with a little bit of the, of the background, how you got into this, this amazing field, this wacky field uh, of direct response marketing. Some people have a, a goal, really, they know when they're 15, 16, and they're in high school, and they're, they're sitting, at, whether it's a typewriter or a or a keyboard of a computer, and they're saying, I know where I'm going with this, I know where I'm going with this. Other people start out going in all sorts of different directions and then find their niche. What What is your story? How did you end up uh, I mean, Yeah, I, I fell into it, um, but I think it was sort of, you know, planned chaos. I mean, it was, I wanted to be a writer, and in college, I was a film critic for the school newspaper, So I thought I would go into film criticism or something like that. But it was really about the editorial side. I mean, I really thought that I really did want to write. And so what I did was when I went pounding the pavement in New York after college, I went to publishing companies and just, you know, walked in with my resume and tried to get a job. I mean, that's how random it really was. And I was an English major. I didn't think I was going to get a job. So let me just, you know, visit 100, 150, 200 companies and just give my resume out and see what happens. And so I ended up at a company called Samuel French, which was a play publisher. They also did royalty rights and all that kind of stuff for high schools doing the odd couple and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I ended up not with an editorial job, but I ended up like doing royalty rights for uh, all these plays, but I still wanted to write. And so I eventually got an interview at Boardroom and at Boardroom, which was also a publisher of newsletters and books, the job that I interviewed for was in list management. So (laughs) I went over there thinking, all right, I'll take whatever job I can get, but eventually I'll work my way over to the editorial side. So I ended up in list management, (laughs) which is kind of a, I mean, I didn't know what that was in high school or college. And if you, and then I didn't know what a list broker was, but I figured they worked on Wall Street and I found out they didn't. So the the progress here was very slow. And when a job opened up in the editorial side at Boardroom, after I had been there for a year, Marty Edelston, who was the president of the company, looked at me and said, I think you have a nose for marketing. I was 23 years old. What do I know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is the idea of, you know, serendipitous luck or falling into whatever. But I realized that, you know, maybe writing wasn't it. I mean, I had this notion. And so I then that began my career. That was sort of the turning point of, all right, I'm going to do marketing. Then the next 34 years was a marketing <laughs> career. I can I'll, I'll fast forward um, 34 years, and it was a, a, a marketing career, but the copywriting and the writing aspect never left me. So that I knew I wasn't going to be a copywriter per se, but I was going to be a marketer who has a, a real interest in 
the copy. And so Boardroom being a company that worked with all the best copywriters, I had the opportunity to work with the best copywriters of the last 50 years and learn from them. And I never wrote a package. I never, so I fell into the world of direct marketing in essence, fell into the world of copywriting, but uh, from the client side. But when I started working with the copywriters, I found that I ended up being kind of like, uh, you know, they'd write the copy and I would oversee it. Mm -hmm. And it became, I became almost like a copy editor, an idea generator. But I really, you know, I, I came out of the list business. So I really understood audiences and they understood the copy. And com I combined with so many copywriters to, to do incredible packages, but they did the writing, not me. But that was the, that was the, you know, the quick, you know, 34 year uh, journey. Uh, there was a lot of detail in there, but I, I hope I got that. The Reader's Digest version. Yeah, you, yeah. you did that well. I, I want to jump off on something you said because, you know, you talked about, you know, audience and, and obviously the big thing with any, with any piece of marketing copy is knowing your audience and targeting your audience and reaching them effectively. And you started out in theater where the audience tends to be much more broad. I mean, you've got, you get, you, there are niche plays certainly that target a very specific type of, a, of an audience, but there's comedies, there's musicals, there's dramas, there's, you know, a play on Broadway will reach, you know, many, many, many people. And, and in marketing, it's, you've got to really hone in on, on reaching a, an audience. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to make too big a deal about the, the job at Samuel French because I was only there for six months. But it's an interesting, I hadn't thought of that. When I got to boardroom, I realized that, and not right away, but over time, that when I looked at the, you know, the basic premise of direct marketing and direct marketing success and the 40-40-20 rule, that it's 40% less, 40% off, or 20% creative. But that what's important there is that it's not that the creative is half as important as offer or list. It's just that if you write great copy and the list and the offer aren't dialed in, you've got 0% chance of anything working. However, if the list is dialed in and then if the offer is dialed in and you have half-assed copy, you're going to make some money. Now, it's not going to be, you know, the oodles of money, but it's not going to be a disaster because the list is so targeted that they'll buy from almost anything. So then the honing of the copy to the list becomes the, the secret sauce. That becomes, you know, if you can take the copy and make sure that, because I, I, it's funny, in my first book, The Advertising Solution, we profiled, you know, six of the legends of, of direct response marketing and every one of them, and they were all copywriters. If you looked at all of their quotes, they all, like, it was always about the list. Mm -hmm. It was so interesting. You know, it was, you know, Gary Halbert, you know, it's not the, uh, it's, it's the brilliant, it's not the brilliant burger. It's the, it's the hungry audience and, you know, the hungry, the, the hungry crowd. They knew that if they had the audience honed in, they could write copy that was much more um, specific to that audience. And that's where they did their magic. So I've always found it interesting that, so I, I used to call it the, uh, in my book, in my new book, Over Deliver, I have the 41, 39, 20 rule, which is 41% is the list. Because if I, I want to get the list dialed in. I want to know my audience. I want to know um, specifically who I'm going after. And once I know that, um, I've got myself a, a much better chance mm -hmm. of writing copy that's going to be copy to list that's going to be, you know, and then, you know, within the list, segmenting the list and then developing copy approaches to the different segments. That to me is one of the secrets of copyright. And, and a lot of people.